We begin with Norwin as the Knights were heavy underdogs against undefeated Mount Lebanon, but Norwin played even with the top team in 6A for the entire first half. Dom Barco was a big part of that as his TD run gave the Knights a surprising lead in the second quarter as called by Brent Wiggum and Tim McKay. I really like him running the football tonight. He has found some holes. This time he's going to give it to the tailback. Barker cuts it to the outside, and we have a touchdown. Nine-yard touchdown run, and the Knights are on the board at the 10.07 mark in the second quarter. Beautiful drive, beautiful run. Good, good uh, pass, or, uh, run blocking by the wide receivers, sort of creating an alley for Barker. Once he got past the line of scrimmage, he angled it to the flag and had a nice wall of blockers set up by his receiver so good execution by the Knights early in this game. Brent was so excited to work with Tim after the game he said man he breaks down the game so well X's and O's and uh, how about Dom Barca. Dom has played a little running back and playing some receiver as of late too but that time he was able to get the Knights a, uh, a lead in the second quarter unfortunately could not uh, really extend that in the second half. Yeah still a good showing however. Speaking of good showings, that was the case for Greensburg Central Catholic as the Centurions. Well, they ultimately came up short against Clareton on the road, but they were within striking distance the entire way thanks to their only touchdown courtesy of, courtesy of quarterback Tyree Turner in the third quarter that made it a two-point game as captioned by myself, Sean Myers, and Jack Rydenauer. About halfway through this third quarter, it's a 12-3 lead for the Bears. Turner this time will keep it himself. And he dives, he is into the end zone, an eight yard touchdown for Turner. GCC finds Pater. Leaving this Clareton Bears defense in the dust, Turner, he's been doing it with his arm, now doing it with his legs. Did have Amari Mack open over the middle in the end zone, but a wise read there by Turner, seeing that he was able to take it himself. And now with a much closer score on the board, 12-9 at the moment, could be 12-10 very soon. What a great performance once again by Tyree Turner. Really impressed me. He's just a sophomore. We know he can get it done on the hardwood and certainly on the gridiron as well. Very bright future for him. We continue plays of the week with Greater Latrobe as the Wildcats appeared unstoppable in the first half against Franklin Regional, scoring 40 points. Perhaps the biggest of their plays came when quarterback Bobby Fetter connected with Kyle Brewer on a 69-yard touchdown pass to make it 27-14 in their favor in the second quarter with the incomparable Jonathan Whaley painting the picture. So he will have a side card to his right. The Panthers look like they want to blitz. And Fetter has the ball complete. He's going to take it to the house. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown. 69-yard touchdown. Catch and run. It looks like Kyle Brewer. Wildcats on a 69-yard touchdown catch. And again, catch and the run was what made it. I saw when they, the Panthers were coming after him and they couldn't get to him in time and he threw the ball perfectly out in front of his receiver at about the 40 yard line and the receiver broke through. And we talked to JW earlier, but uh, he's not done because he is featured no. in this next one. You want to stick around to hear this. This As, one was somewhat important. Yes, I would say so. For Franklin Regional's perspective, the Panthers had a comeback win for the ages. It was capped off by a touchdown with less than two minutes left in regulation as Connor Donnelly found, guess who, Hayden Smith to tie it. And then it was up to the freshman kicker, Joe Bain, who provided the decisive point as commentated by a euphoric Jonathan Whaley. At the throw, 20, dropping back to Donnelly, throwing it to the end zone, he's wide open! Touchdown, Franklin Regional from 20 yards! Caden, Mr. Smith, goes to Washington again. Bain for the extra point to give the Panthers the lead. Here's the extra point. It's up, and it is good. The Panthers have completed the comeback. Oh, that was great. Our friend Bill Beckner sent a tweet out after the game with the video inside the press box on his phone. And you can hear Jonathan screaming in the background yes. and talking about his um, vocal cords. I'm sure they were a little worn down after that game. But that was awesome. That was just a great game for Franklin Regional and for Latrobe. I mean, hopefully they can, you know, really look at that first half and 
see the things they did well and I guess clean up some things for the for Woodland Hills. And apparently Jonathan didn't even sleep that night or No, he was wound up, man. Yeah. I, wound understandable. Up. We conclude plays of the week on the college side with Seton Hill as the Griffins sputtered offensively once again. But their one touchdown, it was of this spectacular variety as Jake McCormick lofted the pass and Taro Gaither did the rest for a 12-yard score, giving Seton Hill the lead over Gannon in the third quarter, as detailed by myself and TJ DeStefano. Couple of pump fakes, now a shot to the end zone. It is caught! A terrific job by Taro Gaither for a 12-yard touchdown. Well, that was snow on the coverage, and he's just standing there like, how did that happen? He was right there, but Seton Hill finally finishes a drive, and they are in front now. And now they're going to go for two, it appears. You know, we talk about the struggles of the offense, but lost it, man. Right there, Taro Gaither did a fantastic job of jumping up over the two defenders and making that catch. That was pretty impressive. Did Randy respond to your tweet? No, he didn't. I, I'll tell you what. Not only did I tweet at Randy, me, me and him are good friends. He decided to ignore me. Uh, I also sent a private message to the ESPN Sports Desk. Um, they have a, a Twitter account where you can send things to if you think there are big plays, like we did with Derek Orndorf during Seton Hill baseball season, by the way. He got on SportsCenter twice. Once our broadcast, the other was in uh, the World Series. Uh, but that was pretty cool. But didn't make it this time. Maybe next time. Maybe one of our plays. Still, I'm coming to